Hey everyone, Leo with Dreaming Tree, and welcome to the assembly video for our Thanksgiving candle centerpiece. This is a wonderful little piece, and in, in my mind, uh, I kind of picture making this, filling it with something that you want to bring to your upcoming Thanksgiving dinner. Maybe um, if you're not hosting and you're attending, you can fill it with some goodies and then maybe even just supply some candles. So once the goodies are done, uh, your host can put the candles in and use it as a piece of decor. Or if you're just making it for yourself, obviously, you just pop some candles in there and use it as a little centerpiece on your table or anywhere in your home for that matter. So, and the first thing we're gonna do is just kind of go through and piece some of the little pieces together just to get them ready uh, when the time comes. So we have these little floral elements here and we double layered them just to make them a little more sturdy. So we need to kind of glue those together. Um, each side of the little holder has two of these little elements and each of these elements is two layers, again, just to thicken it up. So we're gonna begin by gluing all of these together. I'm just gonna sandwich them together just to make them th nice and thick. So let's get our glue going here and just go easy on the glue. Try to get them onto the little tips of these little branch pieces here and find the corresponding piece. There's two that go in one direction, two that go in the other direction. Uh, they're technically mirrored pieces. So all of them are identical, except obviously if you flip them around, they'll fit. Uh, but I want my texture side out. And what I also did, uh, just to give it a, just a little bit of texture, I ran it through my embossing machine with a wood grain. Now I had to use my Sizzix uh, Texture Boutique because my cuddle bug, when I used the, um, <clears throat> when I used the, the, what is it called? The wood grain texture, it destroyed it because of these tiny little pieces here. So if you are going to emboss these, um, use one of your embossing machines that uh, has a little bit less pressure just to make sure that doesn't get torn up. Now again, that depends on which embossing folder you use. Uh, the wood grain does have a tendency to kind of, well, rip things apart, especially if they're small and delicate. Okay, like here I have a little piece that pretty much just wants to fall off. It's holding on by a thread, but we'll get it glued down before it has a chance to disconnect from the main body here. So it's just a matter of getting these lined up. You might have to kind of nudge the various areas a little bit just to get them to sit properly on top of the layer behind it. And just press that down into place. There we go. Got a couple more to go here. So this Thanksgiving is going to be a little bit different in our in our, our household, I should say. Um, our babies come in in about, well, or she's supposed to be induced November 14th, which is just uh, what, what, a week or so before Thanksgiving. So needless to say, we have a lot to be thankful for this year because it's been a long road. It seems like with the um, with the mishap we had last December. Seems like Liesl's been, seems like she's been pregnant for about a year and a half now and she is, she is just over it at this point. But good things come to those who wait, I guess, just being very patient and just hope that everything goes well when the day comes and then we can kind of take a nice deep breath and relax a little bit. And you guys are probably laughing. Yeah, Leo, how you, you, you're about to have a, a newborn in your house. You, how do you expect to relax? Well, we'll figure that out. 
Okay, so this one, again, just take, take the different sections here and just kind of nudge them around until everything fits properly. And if you have a little bit of the backside showing, it's okay. It's not gonna, not gonna make or break it. Okay, so that one was, that's a little tricky, but not difficult at all. Now it's nice and sturdy. So what I'm gonna do is just, I'm gonna pop these underneath my mat, give them a chance to dry flat. Uh, do I still have one more to go here? No, I just did a bad job on this one. That's okay though. Like I said, if you have a little bit of the underside showing through, no one's really gonna notice. Okay, next we have these little leaf elements and just like with uh, the, the ones we were just working on, you've got uh, two on each side and instead of doing the leaves on both of them, we have this little element and then this little element. So this goes behind this one. Okay, so we're gonna put glue on this and just glue that to the back of the piece that has the leaves on it. And I did take, and with this one, this is, uh, what color is this? This is AC Kale. So just line that up like so. This is American Crafts Kale is the color. I actually hit this with a little bit of brown. There we go, just like that. And I'm gonna let this dry flat, but ultimately we are gonna pinch these to give them some dimension. So uh, for each one that we do, we're just gonna pop that underneath the mat, let it dry flat, and move on to the next one. Okay, just make sure you get glue on these little, these little nubs. I'm just gonna make sure that the leaves have a nice support system behind them like that, you can see how that works. There we go, looks great. Give that a good press. Let's pop it underneath the mat, move on to the next one. And move on here. So we'll see, a lot of people in the family excited about the new baby. And we'll see just how excited they are. Well, Liesl's gonna be, she's gonna be home for the next, or for the first three months or so. And she's a nurse, she works at night. So, and she only works three days a week. It'll be fine. We'll make it work. And before you know it, before you know it, good old Peyton's gonna be taking over my job. We'll see how we'll see how soon we can get them to do that. All right, last one here. Line that up. Okay, and press that into place. There we go. Okay, wonderful. All right, so those are the little floral elements. Um, we also have. I'm just going to go through some of the things here. Um, these guys. Uh, I inked them with a little bit of dark green. I also ran them through an embossing folder with the tiny dot. I'm not quite ready for that yet. We have this little acorn element. Uh, there's two layers to that. I'll go through that in just a moment. We do have some, uh, uh, some dimensional flowers on this project as well. Okay, but I'm gonna grab, I'll move that off to the side and we'll take a look at the flowers. I'm just gonna put those together real quick. Pretty straightforward little flower. Definitely not anything to uh, be concerned with. Okay, we have the shadow layer for our caption. I think we should actually just get that put together. And let me get my flower ready. Okay, so we have two, one for each side, obviously. And this little guy here, this is the T in thanks, and that's gonna go right there like so. Okay, so you see how that looks. So let's just get that glued down. Uh, the caption just says Thanksgiving. This is a small little piece, so I would recommend just doing a series of little dots so that we don't get glue spilling all over the place. And we do have a series of markers here. 
Uh, there's one little marker that goes right into this little valley where that little dip is. So use that as a guide. And there's also some markers here, right there, where that little loop is. Okay. Let's find Hanks. If you're ever making anything related to Tom Hanks, you can uh, definitely use this bundle. And this caption is perfect for that. I don't think anyone's going to do that, but I just thought that was kind of funny. Okay, so this is going to go right here. And again, we do have a series of markers to help you with the positioning of all this. There's a little marker right there that goes in the little valley or the little area there, at the bottom of the K. And for the most part, as long as you just kind of match it up with the shadow element there, It'll be fine. Just like that. <clears throat> okay. And then I have a GIV. Okay. And you can see where that goes. There's a little marker there for the top of the G where you have that little, that little divot. And then there's also a marker right there that goes right in between the G and the I. So what I recommend you do is as you're getting ready to place these down before you put glue on it, kind of, you know, give it a dry run, pop it onto this little shadow piece and just get an idea of where those markers are so that you get it right the first time. It's kind of hard to, I almost think it's unnecessary to try to explain every little marker. Like I said, once you put it nearly where it needs to be, it'll kind of all make sense to you as far as where this piece goes. And of course, you always have the actual outline at the, uh, around the perimeter to help you get it situated correctly. Okay, just like that. And just give it a good smack. Okay, so there's our beautiful little caption. And I've got one more since everything is duplicated on both sides. And I just have to find my big T. So hopefully all of our friends in Florida are okay. I know I have uh, one of our, one of my customers, uh, Chris actually lived down in Fort Myers and a uh, place where she lived, the whole roof was destroyed. Uh, luckily, luckily nothing got destroyed in her home, but she was displaced for a few days no power, no water. Uh, it just looked crazy down there. So hopefully, hopefully all you guys are okay. I heard that was probably one of the, one of the worst hurricanes that that region has ever seen. And, uh, yeah, I wish there was, I'm sure there's something we could do other than, you know, like donate to whoever's doing things down there. Oh, and you know what I forgot to do on that first one there? Um, we have two little eyes that we need to put for the uh, eyes in giving. So I need to go back and do that. I'll do that here in just a moment. Just want to make sure I get this in the right spot. There we go. But yeah, I guess while that, while that hurricane was going on, we were up in Northern Wisconsin on our yearly little vacation to see the fall colors. And you know, we missed them this year. Not completely. They were just starting out by the time, literally on the last day, as we were getting ready to go home, that's of course when the colors really started to pop. Go figure, just my luck. But you can't always, you can't always get everything you want, I guess. We had beautiful weather. There have been times we've been up there and it would literally snow on a day. Well, and there's been other times where um, it would literally just be cloudy, hazy, and you know, just, uh, just literally drizzling the entire time. So the weather was beautiful. Couldn't complain. Can't complain about that. It's still a great time. 
Okay, so again, as I mentioned, um, we do have these little, tiny little circles. Uh, there's four of them since it's double-sided. And I have uh, my little pick-me-up tool to help me with this just because it's a tiny little piece. Okay, and I'm just going to pop that right there. And just grab the next one. If you don't have one of these, uh, download our app from the Apple App Store or Google Play. And once you have, just look up Dreaming Tree, find the app. Once you have the app, um, go to, uh, I think it's called Go To Tools or something like that. Okay, so there's that one with the two eyes. Let's do the same with this one. Uh, you can find a link to it. This, uh, the one I'm holding right now, is actually one that was made by Silhouette America years ago. They discontinued it. I don't know why. I thought it was a great tool. Uh, there, there are some other vendors that make similar items. Uh, I don't recall off the top of my head who the other vendor is or manufacturer, but they're, they're still out there. And it's a super handy little tool for working with tiny little pieces like this. It's got a tacky little tip, grabs paper perfectly. You can place it exactly where you want. And I'm just using some tweezers to press it down and hold it while I pull this away. Okay, so there we go. Caption is done. That's gonna be for our bows. And let's take a look at, uh, let's just get our flower done here. Uh, these pieces here, while I'm going through everything, these are gonna be the little inserts for the inside to make the inside look really nice. And as you can see, I uh, did some inking on that. Um, we have this piece here. This is part of the little bow. And these are gonna go around the candles. Okay, actually this is just gonna go around the center candle. I'm putting three candles in here. Okay, so we'll put that off to the side. That will do, probably do that last. Then we have the main structure. That's this guy here. And we have uh, a liner for the inside. Okay. Again, uh, the bow is gonna be on both sides. Okay, so of the candle in the center. This again is for the front. Uh, these are the panels that are gonna go on the front and back. It's a very thin paper that we found. Uh, I'm not even sure who makes it. I'm sure we have that written somewhere. Um, but I've inked that as well. These are the pieces for the side. Let me grab the rest of the pieces for my flowers. I'm gonna put those together. Um, these are the little handles that are gonna go on the side. I did hit this with a little bit of purple ink, actually, as well as the flower. And then of course we have the base. Um, and we are gonna put a little bit of foam in the center of that just to make it a little sturdier since we're gonna have some candles in there. Okay, so there, there's a total of four flowers and each one is made up of five different sets of petals, okay? And you've got them from largest to smallest. So there's one, two, three, four, five times one, two, three, four, okay? And each one of these is gonna to go together the same way. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab a dowel and I'm gonna take and just place each of the petals between my finger and the dowel and lift it up about 90 degrees and just run the dowel through to give it a nice little curve. And that's just gonna give it a beautiful dimension so you can see how it sits. You can see the difference in how the, uh, well, the light creates some nice shadows and highlights compared to the one that's flat, obviously. And what I would also suggest doing is just taking the tips of these and just giving them an extra little curl. And I may want to do that with a dowel that has a smaller diameter to really make that more pronounced. Okay, and I would just do that to the outside uh, of the, the first layer, the bottommost layer, okay? So just like that. And then we'll go through and this process here, just kind of create a little assembly line a la Henry Ford. And we'll just go through and get all of these nice and trained like so. And you could definitely, when you get down to the last two, use a thinner diameter um, dowel. And what you could also do, instead of running it through, you could always pinch the very tip and just curl it around the dowel like so. So there's more than one way to accomplish this sort of training. 
And what we're ultimately doing is taking and kind of um, manipulating the paper fibers. Okay, so you know what I'm going to do here is this one here, the small one, I would just take that and just kind of twist it between your fingers just to get them to kind of stick up like that. Okay, that one's going to be kind of difficult to train with, um, with a dowel and just use your fingers to kind of curl it up. So what I'm going to do is just going to go through the bigger ones here with a dowel and then I'll grab the smaller one and do the smaller ones. So again, the first two bottommost layers, use a, a, a thicker diameter dowel. For the backmost layer, once we're done here, once I start working with the thinner dowel, I'll use that to curl those tips a little bit more, make them a little more pronounced. And then the actual assembly of these is very straightforward. I'm just gonna use a little dot of glue to layer the different layers of petals. And before you know it, we'll have some beautiful little flowers. Okay, so that is it. I'm gonna grab the thinner dowel now and do the same thing, but with a thinner dowel. When you're dealing with the smaller petals, you wanna, if you wanna try to get the curve to be more pronounced, you wanna use a thinner diameter dowel. And I'm sorry if I sound like I have a frog in my throat. I, uh, everyone in the house picked up some kind of a bug recently, probably got it from the school system and um, just been kind of under the weather, so I apologize. If I sound a little froggy. Yeah, this one here, I'm gonna curl these. Instead of running it through, I'm just gonna kinda curl it like you're curling your hair. Just wrap it around the dowel. Okay. Pretty easy. Definitely very meditative. Uh, with this color, this is, I think, AC Squash, I wanna say. Yeah, this is AC Squash. That's the name of the color uh, by American Crafts. And I actually hit this with a little bit of purple uh, just to make it look like it's been sort of, uh, you know, just kind of, you know, kissed by the sun, as they say. Okay. Here we go. I got a few more of these. Remember these little guys, you just literally take them and put them between your fingers like that and just start to kind of roll them around. Give them a little bit of dimension. Some of this may flatten out as we begin gluing things together. So that might require that you just kind of fluff things up a little bit after the fact. And that's okay. All right. Now remember the top, uh, the backmost layer, I'm going to take the thinner diameter dowel and just give the very top an extra curve. There we go. And putting these together will be quite simple. We'll show you exactly how that's done in just a moment. There we go. <clears throat> okay, so let's grab our glue and we're gonna start with just one of the flowers. That's the bottommost layer, the largest piece. And we'll just take a little dot of glue, pop it right in the center. Take the next layer, so it's the second largest, and just pop it right on top, but you wanna offset it. So you don't wanna put it right on top of itself. You wanna rotate it a little bit so that each petal is nice and visible. And of course, you wanna make sure that you get that centered. There we go, just like that. <clears throat> and we can also kinda of bring these up a little bit, create some separation, like so. And ready for the next layer. Little dot of glue in the center. Grab the next largest or the next smallest. Doesn't matter, same difference. Make sure it's centered. And you can kind of lift those petals up just a little bit. And that's what I meant by, you know, once we actually start putting it together, we may need to kind of fluff things up a little bit. All right, next one. Grab this guy. Don't forget to offset the petals so they're not sitting right on top of each other. You want to create as much fullness as you can. That looks great. And the final one, little dot. This is the one that we just kind of um, trained in our, our fingers. Pop that right in the middle, just like that. I'm going to use my dowel to give that a little press so I don't squish the whole thing. And there you go. Okay. And I'm going to let that set a little bit. And then, of course, you know, just take that little petal in there. 
and bring it up like that. You can do it with a dowel. Okay, so let's do a couple more and I think you can handle doing the rest of them off camera, but that's, that's a very pretty little flower. Nice and dimensional. You can see all the highlights and shadows created by the light that's hitting it. So again, grab the largest piece and let's throw a little dot of glue in there. And then the one that's just a bit smaller goes next. Offset the petals, not right on top of each other. Give it a little bit of a rotation. Pop it right in place. Make sure it's nice and centered. There we go. You can kind of lift these up a little bit. Just like that. <clears throat> okay, a little dot of glue. A little dot of glue will do. All right, the next one up here. Just a little bit smaller than the previous layer. And get that nice and centered. It's very easy to uh, lose the centering on something like this if you're not careful. So you definitely want to make sure that you're keeping things nice and centered. And I'm just gonna bring these up a little bit. Whoops. Okay. Starting to get some coagulation there on the glue. Clean off your tip whenever you see fit. Boy, at some point, five years down the road, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna turn this entire process into um, like a rhyme. There we go. Okay, that just leaves one more. That guy looks like he's a little off center. Very easy to do, and that's okay. I'm using my little dowel to position that and get that center. That looks fine. Okay, all right, so do that two more times uh, to finish up the flowers here, and then we'll move on. We can actually start putting together the actual structure. Well, I've got a couple more things, but either way. All right, so. Uh, this is, well, actually, before we do that, there's one little thing that we need to put together here. And again, these are the little acorns that are gonna go on uh, the face of, this is the main design part of our little basket. So I'm gonna take and glue, in this case, the squash color to this tan color. Uh, that is the latte, American Crafts latte. It's gonna go right there like so, very simple. Just pop that into place, just like that. Gives it a nice dimensional look. I did ink this with a little bit of, uh, well, just like the flower, I inked that with a little bit of purple. And then the tips of the acorns on a latte piece, I just took a nice brown, like a darker brown, so that it shows up nicely. Adds a little bit of contrast to it as well. Okay, and just pop that right into place. And there we go. Okay, all right, as I was saying, here is the, uh, the main base for this. Now, uh, in your download, you can have a piece like this. Um, this is the template. So put this template on top of your foam and just draw around it and then just use a, an X-Acto or whatever just to cut it out. And that is gonna be the little, a little added support for this piece, okay? So before I do that though, um, there's these long, tiny little triangular tabs. I'm gonna start by gluing those together. So just throw a little bit of glue on that and then take the neighboring wall here, this little guy, and just line that up and press and hold. It might help to move this long tab kind of out of the way so you can get your finger in there nicely. And just press and hold that for a moment while it sets. Rarely do we have a base like this that's one piece, which makes things a lot easier, actually. Okay, I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. I don't wanna do these just yet, because I'm actually gonna slide this in before we do that. But just to make putting these together easier, I'm gonna leave the little foam out. Okay, just dab that a tiny bit, tuck that under, and press and hold. Okay, and there we go. Okay, so now we can pop this in. 
and it's not the full width of it, and that's okay. I don't really need it to be. Most of the weight is going to be pretty much centered here. Okay, so next, I need to take and I'm going to take these little triangular tabs. There's two left. We'll tuck that in and press that down and hold. You can actually use the little foam. I'm just sliding the foam up to hold this down in place and that lets me push on this so it stays in there. You could take the foam out and get your finger in there if that's what you prefer to do, but I'm not overly concerned about that. And this last one, last one doesn't really even need to be glued down, but just for, just for the sake of consistency here, just throw a little bit of glue on that last tab, tuck that under, Just press and hold that there. Uh, the little piece of foam inside is just big enough to where you can still stick your finger in there and hold that little edge. Okay, and it's ready to go. So now all we need to do is take and apply glue to these three tabs. And we're gonna close this up. Feel free to go a little bit heavier with the glue here because we are gonna spread this glue out to the very edge of each of these tabs like so. Just wanna make sure that it looks nice and seamless. Go all the way out to the very edge on each side, like so. Perfect. And then take and close it up. You might need to just kind of nudge the side walls in a tiny bit. Make sure everything looks nice and lined up. There we go. Just kind of push that wall in a little bit and then just run your finger along the very top edge of this piece, make sure it's making good contact. Okay, give that a few moments. That is nice and sturdy. Okay, and take a look. Make sure you don't have any gaps anywhere. If you do, I'll show you a quick little way to fix that up. My glue is still tacky, so I'm just going around and just given any little areas where I'm seeing little gaps and extra push little press just to get it. There we go. Actually don't even need to do anything. But if you do have a little area um, that has a little gap, just take a scrap piece of paper, throw a little bit of glue right on the very tip of it, like so. And I really don't have one. Well, kind of, not really. And just tuck it in there in between the two layers that are somewhat separated and paint a little bit of glue in there and just press and hold that little area. And there we go. Okay, so my base is done. As you can see, I did hit this with a little bit of purple ink just to distress it a bit. And now we can move on to the main structure here. Now what we're gonna do, <clears throat> all the tabs on the main structure um, go on the inside, which means that we have a great opportunity to apply the panels on while everything is flat. And by the panels, I mean these guys here. Uh, these are the pieces that are gonna go onto these pieces, okay? And this guy here, this is gonna be flush with these little um, scallops here, but we are going to have a border around the rest of it, okay? But it also will be flush with the bottom. So it's not tricky, but it may see, you can, there's a possibility that if you don't get it on right, it's, it's gonna look skewed or kind of sideways. So just make sure that when you do put it down, that it's flush with the tabs, with the tab at the bottom, and that it's flush here, but that then there's a border um, the rest of the way around. <clears throat> now I'm, this paper, you can see how wobbly it is. This is not even, um, I'm not even sure this is 65 pound. So when you're using lighter papers like this, you want to go lighter on the glue. Um, you don't want to. You don't want to get the paper too wet because it will show through. So I'm going very, very easy on the glue here. Okay. And again, may help with this to kind of hold it up and get that aligned up here using little scallops first, and then take a look at the rest of it. 
make sure that you have nice even borders all the way around and then just press that down. And while that glue is still somewhat wet, give it a nice solid press to thin it out and spread it out. Okay, so it doesn't, um, it doesn't warp or kind of show through the paper. Now, luckily we have a texture on here that is gonna make it hard for, you know, um, hard for that glue to show through if it was too wet, but that looks great. And that's holding very well. Okay, so we'll do the same thing with the next piece here, this guy here, same, same piece, just for the other side. And again, very easy on the glue, very thin amounts, which I typically tell you to do anyway, but I feel like with uh, a paper that's 65 pound or probably even less, I'd go even, even more sparse with the glue on that. Okay, again, I'm gonna hold this up, get the little scallops in place, and then I'm taking a look at the left side here, making sure that my borders are nice and even. Now I'm taking a look at the bottom, making sure that's nice and flush with the bottom, and it is, and that is perfect. And if by chance we do have any areas that are not sitting flat, again, we can always take our little scrap piece of paper and paint a little glue right in that little area, and that is not a problem at all. Okay, so that turned out nice, looks good. Now we have these two pieces here, okay, and we've got these panels that are gonna go right on top. And obviously with this, Want to make sure that you match up the little cutout for our little handles, which means that we will have an even border all the way around this time. Okay, so just be careful with the glue, nice and easy. Nice and easy with the glue. You know, sometimes if you have very thin paper and no pattern at all, that's when you really start to see um, the after effects of what happens if you put too much glue on that type of paper. It almost You can almost see the glue through the paper. It almost leaves like little bumps. Okay, but that's fine. That looks good. And of course I took this paper and I inked the edges nicely to make that look even more distressed. It's almost like I added um, some extra stain to the perimeter. It gives it a nice rustic, folly sort of look. Okay, nice and easy. And again, just matching up the little cutout because we are gonna be assembling and putting together a little handle for this in just a moment here. Okay, there we go. That looks good. Wonderful, okay. All right. All right, so now we'll go ahead and put this together. Uh, again, these are the two sides. These are the front and back. And what we need to do is let's just start connecting these together like this. Okay, so let's go ahead and grab one of the side pieces and get our glue flowing here. Let's spread that glue out to the very edge of the tab. You can use your finger if you want. Um, some people use scrap pieces of paper. Some people have a little brush handy. Um, I've tried all sorts of things and I always go back to my finger because, well, I don't have to pick anything up, put anything down. And I can always just wipe my finger off. Okay, so just match that up, top and bottom, right up along where that score mark is. Let's take and fold this over onto itself. Just make sure that edge is nice and aligned. And give that a quick press. Okay, there we go. And why don't we take and grab the other one. We'll glue that over here. Let's take and apply glue to the tab that is on the on the vertical side so this is up and down that's the vertical tab okay grab this piece here and again just get that lined up the top should meet and then the bottom should meet right where the little score marks are it's kind of on an angle obviously and that's okay all right let's take this and fold it over onto itself and you can kind of get a better idea of how things are lining up that way when you see the two edges from each of the sides. Okay, and press that down. Perfect, there we go. <clears throat> now you know what we can do while we have this open like this. We can actually take and apply um, some of our panels to the inside 
It's just gonna make it a lot easier to do it right now than it will to do it later because we do have a nice even border all the way around here. And as I mentioned time and time again, I like putting flat things onto flat things because it just makes it a lot easier. So we'll do this one. There's only one that we can't do flat because the idea uh, with these panels is to cover up these tabs also to add a little bit of color to this. So again, just make sure this is nice and centered. If you can see here, while I fold this up, you can see there's an even border all the way around, even at the bottom. Okay, just press that down. And this, this is also gonna make things a lot sturdier for us too. So if you do put something that has a little weight to it, uh, it should be able to handle it without a problem. Okay, so this is the only one that we're gonna be able to put into place and I'll, I'll explain why. Um, but for now, it's time to close this thing up and finish up the structure. So let's grab our glue and apply it to this guy here. Okay. And we'll grab the other side and get that nice and lined up. Press that into place. And then you can take it and fold it over onto itself. Check that seam. Everything should be sitting right on top of itself. There we go. Okay. And now we can close it up. Let's grab our glue. Final tab here. Spread that out. Might have gone a little too heavy on the glue there. It's okay. Just rub it off. There we go. And just take this last little piece here. I wonder if I can just do this flat. Yeah, I can. Okay, so literally just having the tab down, you should be able to take this piece and just pop it right on there. You might need to give it a little nudge, just make sure everything lines up. But technically, because it's a symmetrical piece, you should be able to do it that way. Take a look at it from this angle. Just make sure it's all nice and lined up. And give it one more press. Okay. There we go. Okay. So there we have it. Wonderful. And next what we're going to do is we're going to put this little liner in. And that's going to keep its shape, obviously. Keep it nice and sturdy for us. So let's go ahead and put a little bit of glue on these four tabs like so. Like that. And just pop that right in. And just run your finger along the perimeter. There we go. Okay, so we have our structure. Uh, next, what we can do is we can take and can put this panel in and we can use our table, which is nice since it's still kind of flat. So let's apply some glue to the back of this and we'll pop that in there. We can't quite yet put the side panels in because we have to make the little handles first, glue those in, and we're going to cover that up. Okay, so what I'm doing here is I've got this. I'm going to slide this right in here. I'm going to do it while, the, while it's flat on the table. Again, make sure that you have a nice even border all the way around. Okay. There we go. And that's what it should look like, okay? All right, next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put our little handles together. These are the handles. Now, what you'll notice on this little handle, there's two of them, there's a little T on one of the tabs, and that's gonna help us um, with the orientation as far as uh, how we're gonna put this in because it kind of is, it's, it's got a, a slight angle to it, okay? But let's go ahead and put it together. Uh, there's three tabs on this uh, side cap here. Um, and one of the tabs is actually going to be used to uh, connect this to the inside. So we don't need to do anything with this larger triangle. There's two smaller ones that we need to focus on. So let's get our glue onto one of them. We'll just do one at a time here. Just a little bit of glue right on that. Tuck that in and then press and hold. We're just connecting it to this little piece here, the top of the handle. Okay, just hold that for a second, just like that. 
Okay, let me move this out of the way so you can see it better. And that leaves one more tab on this side. Just throw a little glue right on there. Make sure you've got the whole tab covered. And then we're gonna pop that tab right behind this side, line it up and press and hold, just like that. Make sure that's nice and set before we move on. Then we just need to put the other side together. Okay, so we've got this tab here. Throw a little glue on there. And tuck that in behind this piece and press and hold. Okay, and that just leaves one more little tab on this piece. Now, because it's kind of in a tight spot, uh, I'm gonna take and just use a scrap piece of paper with a little bit of glue to paint that glue onto that tab instead of trying to try, instead of trying to pull this out of the way to get the glue in there. It's just so much easier and you have a lower risk of uh, pulling this piece apart and having to re-glue it. So anytime you, uh, you feel like you're kind of in between a, a rock and a hard place, just use your little scrap piece of paper. Okay, now again, um, we have a T on one of these. Okay, so check this out. So the T, you wanna keep that at the top, T for top. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna slide this right in through here. Should fit nicely. I have to give it a little bit of a push. There we go. Like that. And then you can see the four tabs there. What we're gonna do is just gonna glue those to the inside. So I'm gonna start with the one that says T. And remember, T for top should stay towards the top. And just glue that to the inside. Just press that down as far as it'll go. There we go, just like that. And then we'll take and fold back the other tab, throw a little bit of glue on there, and then push that down up against the structure. Okay, and I'm kind of pushing from the outside here. And I just noticed that right there, you see that? A little bit of uh, a little bit of a gap there on that panel. Again, that's that really thin paper. I'll fix that in a second, but let's let's just make sure that this stays in place. And then I have these two tiny little rect or triangles. Just throw a little glue on them and take them and push them over. Press them against the inside there, and then this one here. I'll show you what that looks like here in just a moment. Okay, so that's what that should look like. Uh, let's just kind of divert here real quick. You can see this gap on this really thin paper. I don't really like that, not a fan. So scrap piece of paper. Literally there's no glue on the bottom side of this so you can rub that on any surface you want and not worry about blemishing that surface. Just paint a little glue there and just press and hold that down. And now you can see that gap just disappeared. Okay, I've got a little area here too. And I don't think I had enough glue on that. Just a little dot will do. And there we go. Just like that. I'm taking a look at the rest of this to see if I have any other ones. Nope, that's it. Okay, so the handle's in place. <clears throat> now I can finish this off by covering it up with this little tab. I'm sorry, the little panel. Okay, so let's grab our glue, apply our glue to the back of this panel. Okay, you can actually put this down flat on your surface. Whoa. And I'm literally just gonna slide this in. Looking at the bottom, make sure that I have a nice even border. And we can't necessarily do this flat because that little handle is preventing us from using our table for leverage, but that's okay. Just kind of putting my hand down here as I press down, make sure that's making good contact all the way around. And there you have it. Okay, so now that's all covered up and you got a cute little handle there on the side. Give it nice dimension. So over to the other handle now. Okay, same thing. We've got the two smaller triangles that we need to glue to the main structure. So let's do that. Just throw a little glue on that little tab and tuck that in. Grab it, press it up against this surface here, the inside surface. Give that a few seconds. OK, 
Okay, going over to the other side. A little bit of glue there. Close that up and just pop your finger in there, press and hold. Okay, there you go. There you go. And then the last two, grab this guy here, a little glue on there, tuck that in. And press and hold like that. Okay. And then finally, like we did the first time, oh, my fingers are getting kind of sticky. I might need to clean them off a little bit. Um, grab your scrap piece of paper so we can paint a little bit of glue on that final tab. Just make it a lot easier. So I literally had a little bit of glue on there. I'm just kind of dabbing it right onto that tab so it's covered and line it up and press and hold. And there we go. Okay, perfect. All right, so now, just like we did the first time, let's find that T. Got the T there, we'll flare these out. T for top, okay. Okay, so T for top, keep the T at the top and pop it right through the little hole there. We need to just look at it from a different angle just to make sure that you've got it lined up correctly. Just give it a little squeeze. It should be pretty easy to get it through. There we go. And just like we did before, I'm just gonna take and throw a little bit of glue onto the tab and then take it and press it down up against the inside and give it a real good press. Okay. We'll do the bottom one next. I like to anchor it with the largest tabs first and then press that down. Okay. You can see what I'm doing here. I'm using this finger to give me some leverage while I press down from the inside. Just like that, very simple. And then the final two little tabs. Okay, close that up. And as I work my way around here, I'm seeing another little gap. So I'm gonna fix that. That normally doesn't happen when I'm using thicker paper. But as I mentioned, with this, uh, this very, very light cardstock, it's more likely to happen because I didn't use as much glue because I didn't want it to warp. So I would much rather use less glue the first time, apply it, and if I do get some gaps here and there, not a big deal, it can always go in and clean it up, rather than trying to go crazy with the glue and then regretting it later because it's all warped. Okay, so pop that in, make sure you have a nice even border, get it nice and centered, and then just kind of go around and press down throughout, using my, my hand down here for some leverage while I press that into place. There we go. And like I said, I will go around and clean up any other little areas where I'm seeing any little gaps because that is not up to my level of professionalism or expectations. If you're gonna do it, you may as well do it right. Okay, I've got a little gap here at the top too. That's okay. Just paint a little glue in there and voila, all done. Okay, all right, so this guy, if you can see, we got our little handles in place, that's all good, ready to go. Um, if we want, there's no harm in um, gluing this down to the base at this point while we work on uh, the, you know, the face. Okay, so why don't we just do that? We'll flip this over, uh, just trying to make sure that there's no harm in doing this right now. I don't think there is. There, yeah, the rest of the elements we're going to put together and then they're going to get popped at it on. Um, so that should be fine. I'm going a little bit heavier with the glue here. If this warps, it doesn't really matter. No one's going to see it. But we do want some extra glue here because this is a pretty large piece that needs to sit on 
another pretty large piece. Okay, so just don't be afraid to go a little heavier with the glue there. And I would probably stand up while doing this just to make sure that I get it nice and centered. So that's what I'm gonna do. Try not to obstruct your view. And kind of feel, pardon my head here for a second. There we go. Take a look on each side, just kind of eyeball it. There we go. Just like that. And press down from the inside. Now remember we have that little piece of foam in there, which really helps, especially when we go to push down. You don't have to worry about destroying the base. And that means also that we're gonna have a nice clean, almost seamless appearance where the two sections meet, okay? So we're pretty much done with the main structure here uh, with the exception of the decorative little face that we need to put together now. And again, one for each side. Um, that's gonna be the back. That's gonna go on top like so, okay? And this is gonna go on centered so that that beautiful gold, in my case gold, uh, is visible uh, around the entire perimeter. Well, this looks like a cool little cloud. Okay, so we're gonna get that glued in place first. And I'm just gonna do each one um, kind of side by side so that you can see each section twice. This part should not take long at all. Now I am gluing cardstock to a foil, which sometimes may require uh, a few extra moments for things to set. Uh, since this thing's not as porous as, say, this cardstock. And actually, this is uh, kind of like a pearlescent paper, which is not your standard, doesn't have the characteristics of a typical piece of cardstock. Okay, so there we go. Get that nice and centered, press that down. My watch is telling me to stand up. <laughs> no watch, I have to finish this first. Okay. And we'll do the same thing to the other side. Again, go easy with the glue here. We don't need a lot. It's not that large of a piece. It's not dimensional. It's just mostly flat. Just get enough to keep in place. Okay, and again, nice and centered throughout. There we go. Okay. All right, now I'm gonna dig up underneath this mat, grab the rest of these little floral elements. Okay. All right, first thing we can do, we have our little acorn elements. I want to pop dot that just to give it some dimension. And since it's so small, what you can do, for those of you that don't know, is you can actually take and cut these while they're on the little backing, you can cut these pretty much as small as you want. Okay, so I'm gonna flip these over and we'll figure out if we need to cut these even more. Oops, get that out of here. And I've got a half of, half of the typical size foam, uh, foam square there. That fits perfectly on that acorn. I'm just gonna put one more on this little circle, and I think that'll be fine. Those other two, because it's two layers, I think they'll be fine. I'm not overly concerned about it. Okay, so let's peel the backing off of these guys. And you see that there's a little marker right here where the circle goes, and then you'll also see two little Vs and that's gonna line up with the little valleys next to the circle and the little uh, leaf-like element that's there. So that's gonna go just like that, just like that, okay? All right, so we'll work our way down and I'm gonna pop dot the caption next, flip that over. And for this, obviously, if you have some larger foam squares, go to town with those. Okay. And do one there. I like to work the perimeter first. I don't have to go all the way down 
to the very tip of everything, but, uh, and then maybe just a couple more here like that. I'll flip it over, just give it a little push test, make sure it's not completely bending insanely or intensely in any area. Oh, I forgot to put this one down. I said I was gonna do that. Let's do that. Okay, again, a little marker there at the top. That little half circle with the two little upside down Vs. Actually, they're not upside down, they're right side up. There we go, beautiful. All right, let's get the backing off of this for the caption. And then we just have some floral elements to put together, which is mostly just layering. There's a little bit of shaping involved, nothing crazy. Okay, so here's our caption. And that's gonna go right here. Now you'll notice that we have, there's a um, set of markers here, and those more markers correspond to this little valley here, as well as this little valley here. Okay, and then we also have some markers that correspond to, let me figure this out here real quick. The other markers correspond to, there's a little, little valley there where the S is. And then you get those three lined up, you pretty much got it perfect, okay. Uh, so let's do the same thing with the other guy here. Grab our foam squares, start applying around the perimeter. And we'll get this guy into place. There's a few more finishing touches. And then this entire element is actually going to get uh, foam squared onto the main structure as well. Okay. All right. All right, great. So now we do have, um, there's some other little markers here to help you with the positioning of everything else. And that's what we're gonna do next. Okay, so here's how, here's how this next section is gonna go. Um, we're gonna begin with the little branch elements here. And you'll notice that on these two layers here, as far as the leaves and the branches go, there are some uh, little Roman numerals on the circles. Um, this is Roman numeral one. Uh, and the idea here, and we'll start with this one. Um, what we're gonna do, this is gonna get glued. These branches, the branch elements are gonna get glued down mostly flat. Uh, we don't need to put glue on the entire element. I would start with just the little circle here and just go up the stem just ever so slightly to about there, okay? And the idea here is, is just to keep the Roman numeral um, vertical, so straight up and down. And we do have uh, some little markers here. It's right there. It's kind of got like somewhat of a circular shape. Okay, so as I mentioned here, that Roman numeral one needs to stay vertical. And you want this piece that has this little branch that sticks out on the left. And on the right hand side, we're gonna do the same thing, except we're gonna have the one that branches out to the right. We're gonna use the same little marker here to position it, and you can see um, that everything will remain nice and symmetrical that way. Okay, so let's get this other one in place. Again, we're starting with Roman numeral one, just like that. Just a little bit of glue will do. And again, using the little marker there, pop that right into place, just like that. Okay, let's do the same thing on the other side. Like that. Find that little marker there. And let me just explain how that marker works. So there's two little markers here that basically hug the little valley here on both sides of the where the circle meets the stem. Okay. And then there's also one tiny little marker there for the bottom of this little circle. And that's how you know you've got it in the right spot. Okay, just get that right in there. So that's number one. Press that into place. Uh, next are the little leaf elements. 
Okay, now obviously on the left-hand side, uh, let me make sure here, yeah. On the left-hand side, they're gonna be going to the left. On the right-hand side, they're gonna go to the right. Now you'll notice there's a Roman numeral two on here. And again, we wanna keep that vertical. So keep that Roman numeral two vertical and you'll see where the leaves end up. They're off to the left. They're, you don't want it like this. When you have that Roman numeral two vertical, these are gonna be off to the left and that's exactly where you want them. Now, before we glue that down, you wanna go through, you'll notice that on each of these little leaves, there's a series of little score marks and that's so that you can take and pinch these to give them a little bit of dimension. So I'm just taking and literally pinching them right at the tip. I'm literally just pinching them right at the tip like that. Okay, and that's just gonna make them look nice and full and dimensional. And just like we did the first time here, I'm just gonna throw some glue, mostly just right at the very base of this. Okay. And pop that right on top, keeping that Roman numeral two vertical, just like that. There we go. Okay, so we'll do the same thing on the other side. So grab one where the leaves go over to the right. I'm gonna take and pinch all of these leaves. Give these a little bit of dimension, like so. There we go. Make sure you get all of them nice and pinched. Beautiful. Okay, let me just put glue just on a circle here. Keep that Roman numeral two vertical. Pop it right on top of the previous layer, the little circle. And there we go. Okay, onto the other side. Grab this one where the leaves go to the left. Give that a pinch. and throw a little glue on there. Again, keeping that Roman numeral vertical. Press that down. And the last one. So a lot of little details on this, but that's really what makes this piece really shine. Okay, let's just finish up the pinching here. There we go. Flip that over, pop it right on top of layer number one, Roman numerals vertical, press down, beautiful. Okay, so next we're gonna grab this layer, these leaves, and you'll notice that we have a Roman numeral three. And what we want is these guys here are gonna be going down in this direction. So uh, let's see, yeah, so the, that's gonna go like that. And that's gonna go like that. And that's gonna go right on top of the same little circle. Now with these here, we also have little score marks at the tips. So we do want to take and pinch, okay? You can see where the Roman numeral three is. Throw a little bit of glue on the back of that. Keep the Roman numerals vertical. And press that down, just like that. Okay, let's take a look. Yep, that looks right. And again, just a little pinch. I did, I did run this through an embossing folder. The little tiny dot is the name of the folder. Okay, so this is going like this. Keep those Roman numeral threes up and vertical, there we go. And we'll do the same thing on the other side. <clears throat> and again, keep those, keep those numbers vertical. There we go, and the last one. That's right on top of that previous layer. Beautiful. Okay, so all that's left here is to add our little flowers and they're gonna go right on top of where the leaves are. I'm gonna go a little bit heavier with the glue on this just because I added, um, you know, I, I 
ran this through an embossing machine. And sometimes because of that embossing, well, obviously it raises the paper a little bit, so there's less surface area for me to glue down to because of the little embossed dots. Should be okay for the most part, but I don't want to risk it. So I'm going a little bit heavier with the glue. And do the same thing here. Pop that right onto the leaf. And you can see as I press down in the center of that flower, that small flower got kind of crushed. So I will take my little dowel and fluff that up a little bit. But that's that's what these should look like. Very pretty. Okay, so I'm going to let this set for a minute, uh, especially that flower, because I don't want, I don't want, um, I don't want it ripping off prematurely. Uh, also, there's one element left here. Now these, these are little, they're not made by Luminera, but it's the same concept. It's an electronic tea light that has like a real looking flame. And what we're going to do is we're going to put a bow on the center one. So depending on the size of your candle that you're using, uh, we have this band and you'll be able to put it on pretty much any size candle you need to just by simply gluing it down according to the width or the diameter, I should say, of the candle. Okay, so there's actually um, nothing wrong with, we made it longer than it needs to be, obviously. So in my case, this is, the, this is gonna be the width or the diameter of the candle that I'm gonna be gluing it down to. So what I'm actually gonna do just to make it easier on myself is I'm gonna take and just trim this, okay? And I'm gonna trim it to about here, just leave myself a little excess so that I've got plenty of uh, excess to, you know, to, to glue or apply my glue to. Um, so here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna just pop this down on my surface and kind of figure out where I need to place my glue. What I can actually do is I'll put a little bit of glue on the tip of this, tip of that one side, okay? And then kind of figure out where that's gonna go. And then I'll put glue on the rest of this right up to the very edge. I'll just go ahead and close it up, make sure it's nice and tight. And then just press and hold that in place. Give that a few seconds to set. You should still be able to move it around and get it on and off, obviously. Okay, so just hold that down. Okay, because eventually we're gonna wanna slide this up to wherever we need to to make it look nice. <clears throat> okay, so that looks good. And now we just have two little bows to create. I'm gonna grab a dowel, a nice thick dowel. And what I'm gonna do is take and prep, take one of the loops, place it between my finger and the dowel, and then just, just kind of train it, just to loosen it up a little bit. So you can actually take it, lift it up about uh, 90 degrees, and then run the dowel through. Okay, so you can see the difference here and what happened there. I'll do the same thing here and here. Okay, and what we're gonna do, you'll see that there's this little, uh, well, it's a rectangle. Throw a little bit of glue just on that little rectangle, thin that out if necessary, and then bring it down and press it right into the little rectangle that's in the center and continue to press and hold that down. Now what I like to do is just kind of take a dowel and push it up as far as it'll go onto that little rectangle so that it in fact holds it down all the way to the very edge of that little rectangle. Okay, just keep holding that for a moment just like that. And then we'll take the other little tab and bring that in and press and hold that in the center, just like that. Pretty cool way to make a little bow. Okay, then we're gonna take this little piece and just pop it, center it right in the middle of the bow and just take and fold it over and then fold off, fold over the other side so that it meets on the back then we're just gonna put glue on one side like that and press the other side on top of it and hold that down. That's just gonna add a little bit of nice dimension to the center of the bow, like it was actually tied, like a, as if it was like a real bow. 
makes it nice. And then we're going to take this piece and this piece is going to get glued right onto the back. And we want the top of this to be just slightly below the top of the actual center of the bow. So let's just take and put some glue right on the back of that and just press that into place and hold like that and just continue holding. You can put that down on your surface if you want. Now see I'm gluing, gluing foil to foil, which sometimes can be a little tricky. Um, I've seen a lot of you use clothes pins for something like this, just to kind of hold things in place for you. So you don't have to sit there and wait. I should maybe just get myself, get my hands on some of that. Just so I have it. And you know what I'm going to do actually? I'm going to fire up the good old, good old hot glue gun. So I'm going to use a hot glue gun on that. Okay. Let's just finish up the other bow here. I'll show it to you one more time. I'm going to put some glue on the first little rectangle, bring that in, match it up with the little center rectangle and press and hold. This is a cool little hot glue gun because uh, it's wireless. I don't like having the wire on my hot glue gun. Always gets in the way. This one seems to do pretty well. Although the battery doesn't last very long, but I typically don't need to use it, use a hot glue gun um, that long anyway. Usually it's a few minutes and then I'm, I'm done with it. Uh, but you can always pop it onto its little cradle in between uses and it'll charge. So it's not that big a deal. Okay, so just working on my other bow here, just like we did the first time, matching up that little rectangle with the center rectangle. Looks good. I'll take this little guy here center it over the center of the bow and just fold that over on both sides and just take and glue that down to one of the ends. There we go. And press and hold. There we go. Okay. And let's put the little tail on, just throw some glue on that. Oh, actually, you know what? I just realized I forgot that I'm using my hot glue for that. Okay, so let's just throw a little hot glue on the back of this guy, just like that. And we'll take the tail, pop it on there, make sure that it's nice and centered so that the top and bottom are not visible from the front. That's beautiful, just like that. Okay, do the same thing here. And we're we'll, probably going to use the glue gun too to adhere this to the actual little band that's going to go around the candle. There we go. Whoops. I just put that on the wrong way. Yikes. And that's okay. No harm, no foul. Let's try that one more time. Silly Leo. Okay, there we go. Yeah, time we got it, right? Okay, there we go. All right, so there is our cute little bow. And so again, what I'm going to do here <clears throat> is I'm going to put the first bow. I'm going to put the first bow right where the seam is, even though you can't really see it, honestly. Uh, but I do have this little area here where it's kind of creased. I'm not sure why it's creased. That's okay. Throw a little hot glue there, whoops, and pop that right on there, nice and centered, so that that band sort of disappears. Make sure it's nice and straight, just like that, okay. And then we'll do one on the complete opposite side. So instead of putting glue on the band, I'm going to put some glue on the back of this little set of tails, and then kind of looking at it from top down kind of deciding where the center is opposite of where that piece is. And there we go. Okay, so that center candle has two bows, one on each side. 
All right, great. Okay, so then we can take and just kind of rotate this however we want. I think that looks good. And then I can always bring it up if I need to. That looks nice. Okay, so let's finish this up. Let's wrap, wrap it up. <laughs> Keep destroying my glue gun. Okay, uh, so we'll take these two little faceplate things that we created and we're gonna flip them over so we can apply our foam squares to them. And we're get the, gonna get them on the main structure. And we can call it a day on this one. So just like before with the foam squares, I kinda like to work the perimeter first. Like that. And I'm not gonna do the other side during the video. I think you guys get the idea here when we get the first one in place. So just make sure you do this to both pieces, the front and back. And then I'll do some in the center just to kind of give it a little extra support. I think that looks good. Just give it a little push test. I think that's nice. Okay, so let's peel off the backing and finish this off. There we go. Now you see how there's a, a little cutout at the bottom of this. Um, we just need to make sure that we line that up with the little uh, respective part on this guy here. You can see that little cutout there at the bottom. So just need to line that up with that. So what I would do is I would just kind of rest the bottom of this on the actual surface and then just kind of let it go right on top. Just make sure everything lines up. These little scalloped areas here should match up with the actual structure. And then it should be pretty much flat on the bottom. And there you have it. Okay. You know, aside from that, I've got a nice little collection of little pearls and rhinestones and other sorts of bling that I'm going to add to this project. Uh, definitely in the center of the flowers here. There's a nice little spot here. And then I've got this lovely braid that I'm going to hot glue around the perimeter of the base uh, just to really take this thing over the top. And that's gonna look lovely. So take a look at the final photo so you can see what that looks like. Obviously, I'm gonna use some hot glue to, uh, to connect that and join that to the actual base. But So that's gonna do it for our Thanksgiving candle centerpiece. As I mentioned, great little host or hostess gift. Um, fill it with some goodies and then surprise them with some candles. Maybe they'll use it as a centerpiece during uh, your Thanksgiving meal. Um, be a good little conversation starter as well. You can tell them all about the fun stuff that you do in the studio. Or just make it for yourself or a family member. Doesn't matter. Beautiful little piece um, and definitely very versatile. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please take a moment and visit us on YouTube and hit that subscribe button. While you're there, hit the little bell so you get notifications anytime we release a new product, whether it be paid or free. And if you make this or anything from our new bundle, I'd love to see it, and so would the rest of our community. So head over to your Facebook and do a search for Dreaming Tree Group, or you can type in this little URL that you see here at the bottom of your screen. So uh, happy Thanksgiving. Actually, uh, you still got a little while, but either way, I look forward to crafting with you again. Hey, thanks for crafting along with me. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, check out some of our other videos. And also, please consider hitting that subscribe button. And don't forget to visit our site and check out our free SVG section where we have over 140 free SVG files complete with assembly videos. I look forward to crafting with you soon.